All right, in this video, we're looking at two things. The first one is nested and double loops, nested or double loops rather. And the second one is nested lists with loops. So let's begin. Uh, let us assume we have this list L equals, and it has like some elements, three, four, five, six, right? And we are supposed to get the two consecutive elements. Uh, let's say I want to print three, four, uh, four, five, five, six, right? So obviously, you know that we need a loop, right? So I'm going to use while i is less than len of l, and then just like print. And then I'm trying to access two elements, so I can do something about this i. Essentially, I'll begin with like i equals 0, that's element 3, and then i plus 1 is going to be the element 4. So I can like access 3 and 4. Uh, so let me do that. Uh, L index I, right? And L index I plus 1, okay? And as usual, I plus equals 1. So let's run this and see how what happens. So we get this error, and although we get some output, right? So we get like 3 and 4, 4 and 5, 5 and 6, right? But then eventually we get this error, list index out of range. Why? Because... Of course, it picked up all the possible uh, pairs, but there must be that situation when i becomes equal to this element, which is 0, 1, 2, 3 at position 3. And there is like this index of i plus 1, which is like 4, right? We're trying to access some element at position 4, which does not exist. So in order to deal with this kind of an issue, which is very common when we work with lists and loops, is to just like do while i is less than length of l minus 1. How is this going to help? This is going to help because my i is going to stop at 5 and not at 6. And so I can actually access i plus 1, right? Let's run this. So now it works. OK, so this was the first example. Let's say uh, I'm, I'm not interested in getting the pairs, but I'm, getting, I'm, I'm interested in getting all the pairs possible. So for example, I want 3 and 4, 3 and 5, 3 and 6, and then 4 and 5, 5 and 6. Uh, and 4 and 6. So I want all possible pairs. Now we are indexing like two elements at a time, right? Similar to what we did here, but it's like not possible to uh, manipulate this any further. And so here comes something that's known as double loops, right? So let's write that. Let me just uh, get rid of that. And so double loops means a, a loop is nested within a loop. Let me show you how that works. So all, we already have one loop here, right? And this loop, this index i in this loop is is accessing every element, right? And so let me just like remove this. We know how this works, right? But then I need another additional index that would pair this, like while i is here, right? It's waiting right here. Just think about like, it's like something that's waiting at this position. While my next um, variable goes here and here and here and picks all those elements for this, right? And so it gets paired with all of them. And how can we do that? Well, we can do that using an, another loop within this loop. And let me show you how we write. Remember the four rules of writing a loop. You have initialization. And so I'll have to initialize another variable. And the convention is to just call it j instead of i, right, to differentiate. And just say while j less than len of l, just like we said earlier, right? And notice the indentation, right? We want this print statement to be inside this loop because this is a, this is a, a loop in itself. This is like a whole block of a loop in itself. And then, as usual, like have the the a variable increment, right? So j plus equals one. Now, first of all, let's understand what's happening. Now we'll begin with i equals zero, right? We'll come here, and well, uh, zero is less than length of l, so we'll go inside. There is a variable j equals zero, it gets initialized. And yes, zero is less than length of L, right? And so we'll just like print L of i and uh, L of j. Now remember L of i is three and L of j is also three in the very first iteration. We update j. Now j becomes one, but that one is still less than length of L. So we are still inside this loop and this is known as the inner loop, right? So we are still inside this inner loop and uh, we'll, we'll again print L of i, which is still the same, 3. Like i is waiting there because i has not been updated. And we'll print L of j, which is now 4, 
right? And then we again update J and then we check because we are still inside this loop. We cannot go out until this is exhausted. And we check, well, J is five, uh, is at position five, right? And so it's still less than length of L. And so this will again get printed and so on, right? Until we reach here. And once we are done with that, that is no more less than the length of L in the next iteration. And we come out of this loop. So this is the inner loop getting exhausted. And then only we come out of this loop and then this line is executed, which is I plus one. Now my I was waiting at three, now it moves to four. And the moment we do that, we enter in this while loop, which is known as the outer loop. And if you look at J, J gets initialized again. So we again start from like J equals zero and start printing all those elements. So the, the entire process goes on for a particular value of I again. And then let's see what this prints, right? Okay, so as we expected, right? Three, 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 four, three, five, three, six, right? Now notice four, three is also printed, right? So four, three, four, four, why? Because my J got initialized at zero, right? Four, three, four, 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 five, four, six, and then five, three, five, four, and so on. So now you understand how this like double loop uh, works. But let, let's assume we are not interested in printing like three and three and four and four. And also, like I, I figured that this three, four, and four, three is essentially the same thing. So I'm not interested in that as well. I can do a few updates to like these i's and j's, right? So one possible update is that I can say j is always equal to i plus one. Sorry, i plus one, right? And how is this useful? Well, this is useful because when i is zero, my j will not begin from zero. It will begin from here. Right, so I can uh, just like get rid of three and three and that, like these three, four, four, three being equivalent. So I can get like rid of those. So this is three, four, three, five, three, six, four, five, four, six, five, six, all possible pairs, right? So this is how nested loops work. The second thing that we're looking at is nested lists with loops. And let me show you what that means. So let's say we have a list within a list. Sometimes like some data is saved in this form, right? And so you have like these uh, sub lists within your uh, list and they can have like any size of course and let's assume there is another one nine zero one two oops instead of comma I just three and then let's say there's another one with just like one element and what we want to do is we want to go inside this uh, list and we want to print the average of every sub list Right. So this is a problem wherein we are interested in picking these sublists. So let's see how we pick these sublists. Well, you know that this is um, again a list, and so we can use a loop. Let me just like get rid of this part. And so I'm initializing my loop, saying while i is less than length of l. Now notice how I can access these elements before we move further. I can do something like print l of zero and the element at position zero is the sub list and not like eight or nine, right? So let me show you what this means and let's like not have this yet, right? Okay, so this prints eight and nine, so similar to like indexing in a normal list. Uh, similar to that, if I do something like this, right? So zero, one, two, three, the, the list at position three is a zero. So I can like utilize this knowledge and if you're interested in accessing these elements, you will have to, all you have to do is just like, go ahead and put another square bracket. So for example, let's say in my list, in my sub list, this, which is at position one, right? So I'll put one. I want to access the first element, nine. So that's at position zero. Let's run this and you get a nine because now with L1, you're accessing the actual sub list. And that is another list, so I can like index it again, right? So for example, I can index it again with to get one, right? And so on. So this is the property of a, a like a nested list that we are exploiting here, and we want to find the average in every uh, sub list. So let's see how we can do that. And while i is less than length of l, now you know that that i is going to pick up that sub list, right? And let's say I want to print like the average of every sub list. So let's print it, right? Let's print. Uh, the average and you remember how we calculate the average the sum of all the elements right so I can sum L of I remember L of I is going to pick up the first sub list the entire sub list and then LEN of L of 
of i because again that's the length or the number of elements and i simply update my i plus one let's run this uh, okay right so these are the uh, averages for each of the sublists so these are the two concepts that i wanted to discuss in this video thank you so much for watching